beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to celebrate Jesus for the last service. The very, very last service. All the things. The last service for the year. Hallelujah. God bless you. I welcome everyone. Uh, I'll not be preaching tonight. Really, I think the worship team and the media have done everything. We give them kudos for everything. I just want to encourage us tonight. I was contemplating on what I would share just to encourage us. You would call it a valedictory sermon for the year. And the Lord laid just one word in my heart. And I think it's important that... Um, we close on this note for the year we have seen the hand of God he told us that this would be for us as a family the year of the rain and we have seen his faithfulness you cannot imagine the things that God has done around the nation we give him all the praise just one scripture Matthew 11 Matthew 11 Blessed be the name of the Lord twenty eight Matthew eleven the twenty eighth verse Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden let's read on together and i will give you rest it says take my yoke upon you and lean of me for i am meek and lonely in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls he said for my yoke is easy and my burden is light i want to admonish us tonight very briefly on the subject of peace um is one attribute that is grossly lacking in the world today when you put on your television all you hear is very bad negative news this person bombing this nation this person doing this when you come to our own nation all kinds of stories and um, if we do not learn how a believer is supposed to live 
especially in our world today we will depress ourselves we will destroy ourselves are we together now our hospitals are full of people who have inflicted themselves with needless diseases the rate high blood pressure used to be a disease for old people but right now you find teenagers in the hospital with high blood pressure stroke and all kinds of things the turbulence of living in today's world is catching up with so many people depression swallowing people up there are so many people who beginning from the first of this month probably will not rest until the first of january they are hoping to get the money to buy the cow for christmas the rice some of you are depressing yourself over your transport <coughs> excuse me your transport fare back home and all kinds of things listen let me tell you something peace is one of the cardinal representations of the presence of the kingdom the bible says the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink are we together but in what righteousness peace this peace is not just a state of quietness it's a state of rest that's what jesus said he will give he said come on to me and i will give you rest it's from the word shalom it's not just a a state of non-disturbance it's, it's a state of rest the psalmist put it in a very beautiful way he says um he restores my soul he says he leads me beside the still waters the more of a leader you become the more you will see the need for peace in your life and the need to be an advocate of that peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instruments the first revelation i want to give you about peace and a state of rest is that it is a choice peace has nothing to do with what is happening around you listen listen peace has nothing to do with the external environment there are so many people who tell you i don't have peace because i don't have money how can i have peace i don't have peace because i'm not married i don't have peace because there's no admission i don't have peace because i have a carryover or no job or no child um, satan understands that men are carnally minded are we together he knows that the impulses of the carnal man is based on the things around him and so he takes advantage of the happenings in our lives all right and then brings us to a point where we cannot enjoy this shalom this restfulness there's so many people worried you see young people just sit like this and you ask them what they say life and you're wondering what is making that person so depressed what is life the only set of people we believe should have peace are those who die that's why we tell them rest in not in joy not in love because we have informed ourselves that peace is only for dead people once you are alive in this world we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is strange for a man to be a peaceful person peace is not quietness peace is not lack of noise no peace is a state of rest a settled state of rest that is 
based on the revelation of who God is and the integrity of his person. Hallelujah. Believe me, you have mastered the art of living if you sustain a technology in the spirit to generate peace regardless of situations and circumstances. At that point, you are guaranteed to live long. Everyone say peace. One of the greatest blessings that Jesus brings to us is peace. Not just salvation, but peace. You can have all the money in the world and with it will come multiply troubles. There are people who were more peaceful, poor, than they are now. Millionaires but cannot sleep. Are we together now? Have you not read what Solomon said? He said here the conclusion of the matter. He said of reading many books there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the soul. He said but this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Then he says this is the whole duty of man. It's too much in this life to disturb your peace. Every 24 hour in your life is full of enough trouble to jeopardize your life. You don't have to be a bad person. The world we live in from the person who greets you in the morning to the one you quarrel with before sleeping. There are so many people who cannot sleep. You ask them why. They say, Kai, well, I'm, I'm a lenient person, Abi. They are treating me too much in this life. This is what they are thinking about. There are ideologies that have robbed us of the peace of God. The Bible says that peace surpasses all understanding. It's not scientific. You don't calculate it. It's part of the true representations of a spiritual man. A spiritual man has sustained a system in the spirit to be peaceful. A state of rest. Kai, the way people worry. The way people depress themselves is a dangerous thing. God gave me this word that in this season, it's important for us to come once again into this covenant of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing that is an emergency enough to rob you of that joy and that restfulness that comes in knowing who Christ is. Hallelujah. Our world is full of worry. Everybody say worry. Jesus dedicated a whole chapter, Matthew chapter 6, talking about worry. The Bible says, do not worry. Listen, do you know why people lose their peace? What to eat? What to wear? Are we together? And all the mundane cares of life. From marriage to children to money, to lack of it, to too much of it, to human beings. There's too much to rob us of our peace. Husbands have lost relationships with their wives because of the cares of this world. Lack of peace. Many homes today have become habitations of worry and stress. The tension that you see in the life of people is too much. But there is a system there is a technology in the spirit that can keep a man restful. May that be your experience. Listen, I'm telling you, if you are not a man and a woman of peace, you are not walking in the experience of the kingdom. It has nothing to do with whether you have money in your pocket or not. Many of us have tied our peace to Naira and Kobo. So when you check and you find 100,000 when Pastor Femi gave the testimony of the millions coming, I saw the relief it's not your money but just the the fact that money is available gave a lot of us that sigh of relief and i felt very disappointed if you allow money to define your peace or otherwise you make yourself a slave to satan how many people smile only at the end of the month have you seen the way people are happy when they are slotting their atm even if there's nothing just the consciousness that i'm around money it's a 
very demonic thing listen listen this is the last teaching for the year it's a very demonic way to live you cannot tie your peace to anything in time because it will kill you fast your peace must be tied to a person not things your peace must be tied to a person his name is jesus oh i like job come on the bible tells us that job when everything whether he had it or not of course he was human but the bible lets us know that job the, the bible says he sinned not with his mouth When you check your cgp and you see that everything works out fine then you have peace look look at how worry is killing so many people it's one of satan's greatest arsenal in our day worry anxiety depression hear what jesus said john 14 john 14 are you getting blessed tonight John 14. Verse 27. John 14, 27. Can we read it? One, two, read. Not a bank account. Listen. Peace. I live with you. So that you are not confused not peace that comes from money he said my peace there is a type that god gives there is a type that the world gives the peace you get when you receive salary the peace you get when your insecurities are gone people consult witches and wizards today because of lack of confidence in god insecurity has depressed men insecurity causes lack of peace he said my peace i give to you it says not as the world give it that means there is a kind of peace you get in this world peace that is tied to things are we together now and so there's depression everywhere you come and you find out that there's no light oh never eh? and you are angry and the devil says that's right I have found out that circumstances can control the peace gauge of this person and somebody just annoys you you receive a very very nasty text from somebody and while you are meditating upon it you hear that ah mama is sick at home and you sit down and say Kai what is this life about and Satan says this is it this is exactly the state I want because every time righteousness peace and joy cohabit the kingdom must find expression there and so satan knows that every time i can take one of these factors away it's impossible for that person to experience the kingdom do you not know that with all your depression five minutes without your breath and there's nothing to talk about again truly human beings are really foolish the word of god gives us wisdom you find out the way we depress ourselves over several things I once met a gentleman and I saw him so worried. I said, why? He said, at my age, my father had a car. Hi! And so, <laughs> and so I told him, I said, so what does that mean? He said, can you imagine? Ah! I can't make myself a slave like that. Even if I'm going to think, let me think of something noble constructed metals stopping you from sleeping in the night is that not idolatry are we together now think of the things that depress us brothers and sisters and you find out that at the root of them do you know that most of the things that are free in life they are the most important things the things that God knows that money cannot buy, he gave you freely. The air you breathe, the blessings of relationships, the gift of salvation. Most of the things we depress ourselves about, the truth is we can live without them. We have chosen based on an ideology to pressure ourselves. 
Look at the lovely sister that came to share about her phone getting bad. How many people will not sleep today if arm robbers take, well, not arm robbers don't steal phone. I'm, that a thief, anybody just carries your phone. This gets missing. And you see them moving around. Where is my phone? They wake up by two. They wake up by three. They go to Zaria City. I must find out who did this. Jesus said, my peace, I live with you, Koinonia, not as the world gives. You frustrate Satan when you have found a system that does not disrupt your peace. You have found a system that maintains your rest. Hallelujah. When Satan sees that nothing in time can affect this state of restfulness we hate because we do not have the peace of god we depress ourselves we are sick sick and sick and sick people going to the hospital the doctors cannot find anything because they are depressing themselves you you are so depressed you fall down and not even know you're falling down somebody says stand up and you say you mean i fell down what were you thinking about at what age I refuse to allow anything in time it's a choice I reject it I refuse to allow anything in time corrupt that restful state it's a state I've found that is only possible in Christ a state of rest you will never know this peace if you are outside of Christ there is a revelation that brings you to this peace let me tell you what that revelation is if God does not open a door it cannot be opened Ah, and if God opens that door it cannot be closed I have learned by experience that worry does not solve anything it only complicates your life and your problems how many ladies you see them 25 depressed why husband what is that you are so passionate and depressed over a husband the day he comes you are even annoyed that he has come Do you know there is a way you can worry over something? it does not bless you even when it comes the worry is too much even the miracle you no longer celebrate it jesus said my peace i live with you give it to us again media my peace john 14 27 my peace there is a kind that he gives It says not as the world gives let not your heart be what what is the opposite of peace a troubled heart he said let not your heart in other words permit it not choose to refuse your heart from being troubled he said neither let it be afraid these are the things that choke the peace of god fear The fear of the future how many young people are afraid of the future what will my life become you are afraid of getting admission you are now afraid of graduating you are afraid of getting a job you are afraid of not getting one ah. he leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Anxiety is something that is, is okay with the natural man. It's part of our build up as natural men. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Right? anxiety anxiety has depressed people it is that lack of peace anxiousness anxious about everything oh i want to know what tomorrow holds i want to know what this holds and we we go into all kinds of ungodly strategies because we are afraid 
how many parents have gone to make sacrifices for their children tell me what the future of my child will be will he be great will he not be great tell me this and they say okay go and bring a cow go and bring a ram i want to know i'm afraid let me know if tell me if i will live up to 10 years Abba. there is a state of restfulness that when you wake up in the morning you give him all the praise and you say thank you lord for peace you share news that is depressing and you say lord in all things i cannot explain what has happened but lord i thank you i i may not know the details but one thing i know is that you are faithful you are faithful for the things you've done for me for the life you've given me draw me close to you there's too much anxiety in our world we are afraid we are insecure right we are troubled over nothing watch students when result is about to come out something that will be pasted and you will know anxiety makes people to be roaming around they see a lecturer and they are good afternoon sir did i pass just be patient something that in the next 10 minutes will be pasted there and will be left there anxiety do you know anxiety can preempt you and open up seasons that was not supposed to be open anxiety can make you do things you can go ahead of your destiny to your detriment of God that surpasses all understanding and people look at you if you are a man of peace you must be strange because people look at you and say ah is it not you they said your father died and you say well I cried but to him be all the glory say no 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 let's go and find out we must trace the root of this and you say God is faithful <sighs> you are rejoicing and they tell you one million naira has entered your account you say I rejoice but it doesn't make any difference I am still restful and God says so the one million you say well I'm happy it doesn't change anything and the devil says where in the world do I get this person how come you have a constant state of rest regardless of what happens you are in a relationship with a guy you are happy planning your wedding and he looks and says I'm not doing it and while you cry he said Lord you are faithful I may not have him but I have you give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you listen many of us do not know the value and the, the treasure of having Jesus Christ. I know we, we profess it, we claim we know, but the truth is, it's not in our lives. The, our, our unrestfulness shows Jesus there is something that is higher than him in our life. Listen, if I give you one million, Sam, right? Let me use money so that we understand. If I give you one million, Sam, and you see five naira falling on the ground will you leave the one million to pick it if you leave the one million to pick it what does that mean it's impossible for you to say i value this that's what that's what is responsible for the turbulence in our lives you have the greatest gift and you throw him away and you are looking at other things that are mundane because in your mind although we claim through our songs that he's everything 
but the truth of the matter is that our passion and obsession about things of a lesser value show that they are out they are truly the gods in our life when a man has jesus christ listen please hear me i know we live in a society that thinks what i'm saying is old school when a man has the christ and the revelation of the operation of the kingdom you have the greatest gift in your life brothers and sisters whether in plenty or in little you are a man of peace how many gentlemen are about to be bad fathers because their joy and their peace is tied to things around the moment the man is promoted everybody receives the joy the moment he fights with somebody in the office everybody is going to receive a share of that anger that's a bad life i don't have enemies in my life believe me i cannot hate a man i know this sounds arrogant it's not the natural joshua selman have i'm human but i cannot that quality is no longer in me the light of god has consumed me i found a key love never fails when was the last time they taught you this when they were teaching you on an antidote against failure did they ever teach you that love never what does never mean there is no possibility hmm. love so i live a very restful life if i go back and i find my place burned to ashes i will look at it and say wow the only pain is i'll say i did not carry my books where i write the visions in my life but in five minutes i'm rejoicing satan has lost the art of wearing me i i humiliate him with my peace hmm. are we together i can sit down with a cup of gary and rejoice the same way I will sit down with Turkey. I can sit down in a five-star hotel and rejoice the same way I will sit down in a mat. If that is not your case, you are already in deception. The devil is about to hack your life into pieces. I will never, no, 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 no. Whether I'm, watch, I'm wearing a watch of 100,000 or wearing a rubber watch of 50 naira, it does not make any difference as far as peace is concerned are we together whether you are wearing a shirt of one million or you are wearing a shirt of ten naira it doesn't make any difference never allow the things around you to define your state of rest you are not a christian you are not a true christian i'm telling you this when that happens i have found life i have found peace I'm not teaching you to be irresponsible but I am telling you you must start living when you learn to be peaceful that nothing in time can disrupt that restfulness whether in tears or in joy whether in plenty or in little you have learned to maintain a spiritual equilibrium there is a there is a, a spiritual buffer nothing will take you out of that state you are a true spiritual man. Some of us are probably seated right now, depressed. I want to travel tomorrow. God knows I need 2,000. What I have is 500. Because of one five, you will not sleep. And your not sleeping will not bring it. You see the trouble? Worry was never designed to bring solutions. It was designed to depress you. If I don't trust myself, why can't I trust God? If you don't trust yourself, trust God. My peace. I move up. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed. Every 24 hours, I watch people and I am shocked at their, at their ideology. Why do people think this way? why can't they be peaceful why won't you choose to be peaceful listen some of you look at you're not even so old but look look at the way your life is depressed worry and anger and hatred always cynical always on the negative side 
talking about everything that is not working in your life and the life of people why don't you change what you see why don't you change what you see i don't see negative things all i see is the faithfulness of god in my life all i see is the mercy of god it is the goodness of god in my life god has been good to me if he never blesses me in this life he does not owe me anything i owe him my life and eternity that's how to live that's how to live you kept ten thousand naira. i got missing you are crying you are yelling you are quoting scripture the prayers you would not have prayed to bring you into intimacy you pray for two hours and you start checking oh god your word said even god who called the dead and call the things that be not as though they were lord me i'm saying this thing is my own it must come i'm telling you it's not the prayer of faith it's the prayer of selfishness and idolatry The greatest gift I have in my life, listen, is not the anointing. The greatest gift I have in my life is not money. The greatest gift I have in my life is not people. The greatest gift I have in my life is the presence of Jesus. Ah, in life and in death. The worst that can happen to me is that I will die. You will cry for seven days and say, ah, ah he taught us about long life. It doesn't matter. I'm God. <laughs> And at the end of it, it's peace. Many of us are already on our way to produce bad families because of depression. What is wrong? No money. How can I be happy? Are you not seeing what is happening in Nigeria? Buhari's government is this and that and that. How is it providing for your needs? Have you not read, my God shall supply? leave that one jare we are talking about real issues now you are not a christian a true believer listen a true believer is one who has staked his life on god's word i believe the word of god to death to death to death i believe the word of god my life revolves around it i will never allow anything in this life to depress me it does not have that ability If I'm told today that any of my loved one is dead, God forbid, I will cry. But in it, I will get up. And the only song that will come out of my lips is the song of his faithfulness. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful. We are saying faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Listen, create a limit for the effect of the things in this life as far as your relationship with God is concerned. The presence of Jesus is more than gold, it's more than a billion dollars the presence of jesus is more than koinonia is more i will give up koinonia one thousand times for the presence of jesus i will give up anything and i mean it in this life no i will give give aside every accomplishment and everything for the presence of jesus that's the gift i have I, you hear people say, ah, my reputation is at stake. I don't even have one. Ah, I don't have one. I'm telling you, my reputation is his reputation. I'm too young to kill myself with that kind of ideology. I have no reputation of my own. Help me, sir. Thank you. I want you to get a revelation tonight inside and outside as we wrap up this year make a choice that for the rest of my god-given life i choose peace i choice no matter what happens in my life i made that choice i choose to be happy 
people see you and say you are always laughing then they come to your house and find out that the only thing there is water there's no gary and they say so why are you laughing what's the laughter for the laughter is because you have come into oneness with one who is greater than anything that can come. see let me tell you please please lose the the affection you have for things you hear me say this all the time you must get to a point in your life koinonia where nothing in time has the ability to steal away the presence of jesus when john or no, not john now when peter was about to die they were about to kill the body right they put him on a cross and he said no they cannot crucify me the same way they crucified my savior look at a man he said turn me upside down i am not worthy to be crucified that way what did these people know that in the midst of their depression paul will write a letter encouraging people and paul will say i'm in chains in chains a man in chains telling people count it all joy my brethren when you go through diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith work at patience in chains you are not in chains yet we are depressed please i want you to i want you to weary satan with your passion for jesus christ weary satan with your passion for the things of god oh i wanted to give you ten thousand i no longer will give you say to god be the glory and they say what kind of person are you is it that you don't get angry you have sustained a system for as long as god is alive i remain peaceful my depression will start the day someone can dethrone him and then at that point i know that my life is no longer secure listen the oldest man on earth today is not up to 120 years so what is the vanity are we together the vanity in this life that makes us to get up you are pursuing car you are pursuing jeep you are pursuing this you are pursuing that oh they said in the village i'm not successful let me prove to them who cares are they successful they in the village are they successful They said they don't marry fast in our family. That's their cup of tea, frankly speaking. See, learn, learn to, learn to ignore Satan. It's one way to conquer him. Ignore his proposals and you will step into a state of rest. Someone looks and says, have you gotten the admission? Say, why now? Ah, I say, God is faithful. I know that he makes all things beautiful in his time. They say, oh, forget that, you know, you are disappointing us and you, you leave them away and when you go the devil will say think on these things and you say no the bible says finally brethren whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are noble if there be a good report if there be any praise he said think on these things this unemployment why are we like this and then you turn to your friend and say why are we suffering like this the friends say attire oh that's nigeria they know you are, you are thinking like a non-christian the peace of god see let me tell you what will happen if you are living in peace men must hate you because you see there is a popular saying that misery likes company when people are frustrated they try to look for those who are like them so that they can form a team we the committee of humiliated people and the moment you refuse it they interpret it as pride what are you saying are you not older than us at least me i'm 28 you you are 32 you are not depressed you are not joining us in this thing. I'm, I'm not joining i'm not a party to all of this five years after graduating no job you won't come let's discuss this thing say no i'm not a party to are you willing to be that different to ignore the mockery and maintain the peace of the kingdom there's too much depression in our world and I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. 
the person who is depressed humanly speaking does not even have any guarantee whether he will wake up the next day yet he's thinking people have accident under the me thank you depression makes them to begin to hallucinate they think the road is this way whereas it's this way they go and bash into a tree and die say i i thought i saw the bend this way frustration I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence, Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence, Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember a man whose car had accident when he came and saw the car burning he fell down there and died if that guy gets to heaven and i'm jesus this is the first thing i'm going to do i'll say what brought you here and he said i died I said, of what he said car i'll say go back he must go back for that you must win at least a thousand souls <laughs> oh no come on you don't die and enter the gates of heaven if i'm jesus you must go back and win souls one by one not general one by one you die because your car caught fire they stole your clothes from january you are still remembering it now see listen do you let me tell you something anything you hold on to you are telling god this is the limit of my life don't ever lift me beyond this limit because at this point this has become my god i love him you never hear me pray all those nonsense prayers oh god why me why all of these things why eh? oh god won't you won't you no 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 I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. this anxiety and this rage right have you seen friends do this I, I believe you don't do it um christians should not do that but there are friends that do that um they deliberately look for trouble they keep saying things and instigating anger and then they laugh there are people who if they laugh at you there is a way they laugh at you do, do you have such kind of people in your life oh my goodness they laugh at you in a way that you, you don't you, you 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 try to check is it that i'm stupid am i a clown what is the meaning of all this if you live your life like that there are many of those kinds of people around the world you will hate yourself and you will translate that hatred to every other person around you i love myself god knows i love myself I've, I've said it again and again here that philosophy of hanging yourself even if i were not born again it would never happen to hang myself no i'd rather die in a sleep but not to hang myself who buys the rope <laughs> me go to the market and buy a rope to hang myself <laughs> say i choose to be peaceful shout it i choose to be peaceful i make up my mind to be a person of peace go home with this mindset and see how you will discomfort a lot of people because for some of you they are waiting for you there is a part of the gist that has been it's like a pie they left it for you they are hoping that you come and they say come and tell us your version of the suffering in nigeria and they say well i 
I have just one thing to say. God is faithful. And I say, please, please, let's be real. We are also Christians. He said, this is my reality. I mean it. I'm, I'm not playing games. And then they get angry. Right? People always get angry when you don't conform. I once met a woman who was angry, said that she's been barren for a number of years. And um, this was a woman. She said, I went to the hospital. They said, I'm okay. They said, I'm okay. It's my husband that knows what A and B and C. And, and you know, I don't want to. He has his own medical this in and all of that. He's the one, blah, 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 from his father's side, from this and that. And I knew that this woman will not carry a child for a long time. With this bad attitude, there is, the kingdom cannot come because there is no peace. It's an equation. There must be righteousness. There must be peace. And there must be joy. When this three cohabit, it grants access. It's like a spiritual code. Hallelujah. And I looked at the woman. I said, Madam, the issue is not to throw blames and say it's your husband. Two have become one. That's what the Bible says. If he gets money now, will you say it's his money or will you say it's our money? See that? And I encourage her and pray with her. Peace I give unto you. I don't know what you are going through right now. But let me tell you, I don't want to know. One thing I know is that your way out must be the way of peace. Depression will never bring you solution. Are we together? Worry and discussing issues with people who cannot help you will not bring you out. Jesus said, John 14, please, 27, my peace I give to you. My peace I give unto you. The Bible says one of the names he will be called is the Prince of Peace. Not the Prince of Worry. Look at Jesus on the cross going through the pains of the nail and then he looks at john and says john behold your mother mother behold your son what kind of peace is that a 33 year old man naked on the cross he would have been angry look at stephen when they were about to stone him he looked into heaven the only guy that did what jesus did was advocating forgiveness for the people that's a state of peace. May God make you a man and a woman of peace. I'm telling you. In plenty, it does not change you. In not plenty, it does not change you. Right? When people annoy you, and instead of you boiling around, you just find a song of melody. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus In moments like this I sing out a song I sing out a song to the Lord Singing I love you Lord Singing I love you us are going to be going home let me tell you what some of you will meet in your house poverty like never before it's not a prophecy some of you that's that's the truth you will go home and they will tell you they've not paid workers for months and then you can choose to join them in the depression or be an instrument of peace and say look i know that things are not going all right now but i tell you a day will come when we will rejoice in this house they say where is that day we are talking of now, now. Some of you, the moment your parents see you, they will be angry because they are thinking of school fees. And you tell them, no, God is faithful. Right? Some of us are going back to our loved ones. And we may not have anything much in our hands to go and bless them at home and we are depressed. It should never be so. You choose peace never allow satan depress you the lord put this in my heart to share with us tonight 
I'm going to prophesy and bless us for the year. But I want everyone here, those listening outside, let nothing be so serious in this life such as to disrupt your peace. There is a childlikeness you must have if you want to live in today's world. Some of us are too matured for God to use us. We are too, we are too bossy, we are too old. We are not childlike enough. I choose to be a child before his presence. I will be a child with my children and my grandchildren. I will still remain a child in his presence. To tremble at his word. Nothing is too serious in life to depress me. Nothing is too serious in life to make me hate people and get depressed all around. No joy, no peace, no. I teach you the art of living. I teach you the way winners live. The key is to hand over everything to God. I'm rounding up. I know you think you are born again, but let me tell you, when worry still kills you, you are not truly born again. There is a part of you that has not been surrendered to him. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You gave him your joy. You gave him your spiritual life. You gave him your prayer life. But your financial life you left away from him and that's where the devil is using to kill you because you've not handed it over we're going to do a handover ceremony where you will take every aspect of your life and say god i'm tired if it's based at me, i would think this marriage issue will kill me this job issue will kill me this barrenness issue i hand it over listen he said come on to me all ye that are what weary and heavy laden what did he say i will give you rest do you have it do you have that rest koinonia do you have that rest today if you have it it will tell in your life if you have it it will tell in your lack of desperation for mundane things oh when will this come oh when will this no 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 I can't wait for tomorrow. I can wait. I can wait. There is no hurry about it. I can I can wait for tomorrow to come. Ah oh, no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I just can't wait. Why? Why? The only thing I cannot wait for is anything that has to do with the kingdom. Every time I get up on Fridays when I'm around, I, I almost cannot wait for evening because I want to be able to bless the people any other thing that is not direct so winning no i can't be that desperate about it i can wait can you wait for the car to come answer me some of you can't wait can you wait for the car to come can you wait for the husband to come can you wait for the wife to come can you wait for the promotion to come all the days of my appointed time i will until my change comes If you force a door to open that God did not open, it will open, but it will open and kill you. Oh, I choose to wait. I choose to wait. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful, not in your time, in his time. He has the clock, right? And if you will wait for him, he will beautify your life. Some of you cannot wait to get into ministry. That's why you will die like a chicken. The first person you prayed for, they beat you and say, don't come around our house again because God is saying, wait. He said, no, my blood is hot. Calm down. Calm down. I choose to wait. I choose to experience that peace. There are three prayer points we are going to pray desperately tonight and then I'll prophesy over our lives and we'll be done. This is the message that I want us to close coin on here with. The first prayer point is a prayer point of handover. Let me explain it and then we'll pray. That you get to a point, come, where 
you take your life and donate it to God Lord I'm tired of this trouble he said my yoke is easy the one you are carrying is not easy that means it's not of God my yoke is easy and my body is light will you hand it over to God and say Lord I'm tired of depressing myself this is my conviction I am a complete servant of God if my reputation goes bad he's the one to receive it if God honors me he's still the one to receive it are we together if I lack food to eat and I don't have the energy no soul winning no salvation who pays the price if there's food to eat I make God responsible for my life I play my own part of the deal and I don't I never dapple into his part it's God's part Lord I leave it to you I have done my own part of faithfulness I know you have you are too faithful and then you rest we're going to hand over you know let me tell you how to know the area you've not handed over to God the one you think about all the time the one you are obsessed about and you are almost dying about God is not yet Lord of that area are we are we ready to pray rise up on your feet everyone please I want everybody to pray pray seriously hallelujah lift your voice and cry mention the areas in your life that cause you sorrow and depression and say lord i hand it over to you go ahead and pray go ahead and pray i hand it over to you oh god i'm tired of killing myself i'm tired of dying slowly it all belongs to you Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. it all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Now turn it into a prayer. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Rekete kababa shatalabaka. Father, I lay aside every financial worry. Pray. I lay aside every worry about job I lay aside every worry about children every worry about ministry I choose peace I choose peace I reject worry I choose peace oh you make me lie down in green pastures you lead me beside the still waters. Kaparaka to shake it a little. Em prokoto poste take it. Shake it a little koto stop break it. Em prokaba baka prates kalaba yana mana mana. Make sure you are praying. You are the Prince of Peace, and I've received you in my life. I receive your peace. I receive your peace in this wicked world. I receive your peace. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For what? He cares. That's the second prayer point. Listen. Don't think God does not know that life is full of troubles. Are we together? He's called the ancient of days. Don't think he's not aware of your challenges, but he still, he still tells you, my peace I give to you. 
the second prayer point is you are going to lay aside every trouble bring it before him and say lord this is what is disturbing me this is that which is troubling me i i bring it to your throne lift your voice and pray i bring it before your throne oh i bring it before your throne i exchange my burden for your body i exchange my yoke for your yoke your yoke is easy your burden is light lord that which i've been carrying is killing me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, listen. The last prayer point is a cry from your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, I lose affection for anything that is not you. I, I can use them, but they will never win my heart. Lift your voice and pray. I lose affection for money. I lose affection. Pray. Pray. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. I lose affection. Money will never depress me. Pray. I lose affection. That loss for material things. That loss for fame. That loss for power. That loss for accomplishment. I lose it. I break away from 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 it. Everything I've held on to. The last prayer point let's add one more cause the spirit of depression worry anxiety it is of the devil open your mouth and curse it open your mouth and curse it i reject you in my life i reject you in my family i reject you in the name of Jesus, I reject worry. I reject anxiety. I reject depression. In the name of Jesus. Shabakata la barada ramos. Lekete proskete. Enkretos koto lekete. Rekete kete le boko to begede belade ramos. Rekete kere boto supradish. Reject it. Reject it from your destiny. My God is faithful. My God is faithful. I refuse depression. Nigeria will not make me depressed. The government will not make me depressed. The economy will not make me depressed the happenings around my life cannot make me depressed 
I reject depression. God is faithful. My God is alive. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever on for our salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing, Savior. He can move on. gentlemen say after me in the name of Jesus I will be a man of peace my home will be of peace I reject depression I reject worry I reject frustration I embrace the peace of God peace above money peace above fame Peace above prestige. Peace above accomplishments. This must be your understanding. You must embrace the peace of God above and beyond every other thing. I want to prophesy to you in closing. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. Help us media. Hosea 12 13. This will be the last service for the year many of us from tomorrow will be traveling you cannot ignore the place of prophecy it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen when Israel cried in Egypt God did not go to them to rescue them. God went to a man and said, are you hearing my people cry? Are we together? God would have gone to Egypt and said, okay, I have come. But God went to a man and left the salvation of the people in the hand of a man. It says by a man, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Right? He says, and by a prophet was he, Israel, preserved. Listen. One of the greatest revelations I've had this year is understanding the operation of the body of Christ. The Bible says that the church, give us Ephesians chapter 2, please. Let's just look at that one scripture. I'm about to prophesy to you and I need you to have this understanding. Ephesians. Hmm. Let's look at 19 and 20. 19 and 20 quickly, please. Ephesians 2, 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And he said, all of you are members of the household of God. Right? 21. Okay, 20. He says, and are built upon what? The foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Listen, you must understand how God built the body. He said the moment 
you get born again there are two ministries you must encounter if your destiny must arise it says you must encounter these foundational ministries the ministries of the apostles and the prophets it's not about human worship it's how god built the kingdom he said it is built upon this truth foundation there means upon this truth this revelation is called the foundation of the lord he said nevertheless the foundation of the lord does what stand sure you can't change it he stands sure so by a prophet every time people cry god never comes to them he comes to them through a man go and read your bible when there was famine god came to a man there are human beings that god have sent that hold the prayer points of people that carry anointings that can open the destinies of people but the bible tells us that you have a role to play let's look at that one scripture second chronicles 2020 20, right your job is to believe second chronicles 2020 20. he said believe in the lord your god so you shall be established but it's not enough to just believe in god he said believe in his prophets he didn't say the prophets believe in his prophets so shall he make progress so shall he do well so shall he prosper see this is the formula don't try to create another one you will punish yourself for nothing the church was built on the foundation Every time God hears the cry of a people, he goes to a man and he says, you heard their cry. I thought God will come to Egypt by himself, but he went to Moses. When creation was crying in sin, Jesus had to become a man because they searched and no man was righteous enough. So Jesus became a man even god did not come directly he had to become flesh are you not seeing how it works when the revelation of the of the new testament was to come to the body a man had to be found in the name of apostle paul and he brought that fellowship of the mystery to the body of christ when satan wants to destroy you he will make you believe in god and disrespect his prophets are you seeing that he won't tell you to stop believing in god you say believe in god after all everybody has equal access to god and you will fool yourself and see that you are praying and fasting but nothing is happening when the widow in zarephath was in trouble god went to a man immediately and said i have commanded you go have you not seen it when samaria was in trouble i thought god would have gone to them he never went to the lepers he brought in a man and he said by this time the moment the man spoke god looked for lepers in other words the tool god will use is not necessary let the prophecy just come he can use anything an axe head can float back when a stick comes but it must be at the instruction of the prophet he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it if that man threw a stick nothing would happen but he did it at the word prophecy is powerful i learned this from god's servant bishop david Oyedeko. he has changed the lives of people with prophecy but it only works to them that believe you don't receive a prophetic word from a colleague you don't receive a prophetic word from a friend i've taught it here there are individuals that are not pure human beings lift your hands god's ability God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Sing one more time. God's ability.
hallelujah i've shared with you again and again my visions how that i saw an endless sea of people and they were crying no food no water and i said who is the cause and they pointed at me ah, and i was afraid because some people had chased me to come into that small room where i was hiding and i made up my mind i said i was still going to go out and rescue them if i perish i perish the moment i opened the door i saw a giant and he held my hands and he said i will walk with you brothers and sisters this is not it's not about human beings or human boasting it's about god's spiritual system arguing it is foolishness there are many prisoners today paying the The foundation of the Lord and the Bible says that foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic I want to speak over your life listen the year is not too late for God to finish what he said he would do are we together oh no come on we have at least 20 more days it doesn't take time is it not a prophet of God that said by this time tomorrow it doesn't take time is is only unto men according to their faith don't say it's the end of the year god does not work with human calendar he works with his word the moment the word of god comes he said he said let there be and there was in the name that is above all names i prophesy over your life every package that is meant to come into your destiny in this year of the rain that is yet to be delivered i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus every request you have dropped here from january february march april may and now it's december and it looks like god has failed you let me prophesy to you that by 31st of december in the name of the lord jesus you will be holding your testimony i prophesy to you that by 31st of december you will be holding your testimony May not be possible with men but the bible says with god we are involving god in this talk every level of prosperity you should have entered in this year of the rain and for whatever reason and by any means you have not entered it let this next 20 days days of supernatural supplies hallelujah that spirit that destroys men towards the end of the year that people would have labored have you seen obituaries 28 december 29 december some even 31st in the name that is above all names may a seal of longevity come upon your life may a seal of longevity come upon your life i forbid death from coming towards your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the frustration you usually face at home there are some of us December times are times of pain poverty this December will be the best you have ever had I prophesy this December will be the best you have ever had in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. 
everything that has troubled your heart everything that has brought tears to your life you cannot even share with people because of the pains i prophesy to you tonight the prince of peace is stepping into that situation i declare unto you the prince of peace is stepping into that situation every challenge in your health every sickness i don't care what it is that has refused to go this night in the name of jesus we challenge it and we command it to live your life forever we command it to live your life forever a dimension of favor you did not see from january to november i decree that you will have it beginning from this night I prophesy it again beginning from this night not tomorrow this night may that dimension of favor come over your life in the name of Jesus everything you are praying for is restoration there are people who have lost things and you are trusting God you are saying Lord before the end of the year let a miracle come the Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say yet restore in the name that is above all names I prophesy restoration for you I prophesy restoration for you in a way and a manner that you have not heard listen did you hear the testimony of Pastor Femi and his family 18 years even if it's one one thousand they are paying you every month at the end of 18 years you will have something to smile enough with if your salary was hundred thousand calculate it times 18 years plus benefit and allowance that kind of restoration in the name that is above all names may it come upon your life tonight i prophesy to you receive that restoration right now the testimony that you need to take home as an evidence that this was the year of the rain for you the testimony you must hold and tell people look this is a symbol of God's faithfulness I release it upon your hand right now I release it upon your hand right now in the name of Jesus Christ may you be a burning and a shining light in the name of Jesus Christ through your hands many will be healed through your hands many will be saved i place an unction of the almighty upon you that as you go back to your various locations and stations you will come back with a harvest of dramatic testimonies in the name of jesus christ next year for you will be a it will be a balance brought forward of everything everything in the years past that have refused to come it will be a balance brought forward for you in the name of Jesus Christ listen it is still the year of the rain are you hearing me it is still the year of the rain and I prophesy to you whatever the rain represents within these few weeks we have to the end of the year may you experience the full revelation of what the rain represents hallelujah any human upon the face of the earth who is holding the key to your blessing the key to your breakthrough in the name that is above all names from the north to the south the east and the west between now and 31st December by prophecy I call them into your life by prophecy I call them into your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Samuel told Saul he said as you go back you will find out that the donkey that has been missing has been found and then he said you will see three men you will see them holding bread they will give you from the bread whoever is holding what is supposed to be given to you whatever resistance and manipulation from hell is stopping them from releasing it 
I command that between now and the end of the year, it comes into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. The kind of Christmas celebration you have never seen from birth. In the name that is above all names, may it be experienced this December. Whatever ties away financial supplies from your families during this festive period so that they celebrate Christmas like frustrated people, I decree and I prophesy in the name of Jesus, may it be a different one this time around. For those of you who are going to be traveling far and wide, we declare that the mystery of the blood goes with you all through. In the name of Jesus Christ. In one minute, I'd like you to ask everything remaining that you want God to do. Please, in one minute, go ahead. I'm releasing my faith with you. In one minute, every other thing you are trusting God for. Don't say it can't happen. Open your mouth and pray. Oh, I release my faith. I release my faith. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Open your mouth and place a demand on the faithfulness of God. Lord, I still believe you. Pray. Tell him, I still believe. It says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come i agree with you that whatever you have declared before god may it become a testimony in the name of jesus christ hallelujah Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one can. No one will. You. Only God will open your eyes to see what just happened, just in this fraction of a second. You see, when you have to be spiritual. Spiritual things are very strange. You have to be discerning. I'm not speaking just using brain. This is not brain work. Brain work cannot do this. This is as an altitude in the spirit. So the fact that I'm standing here just looking at you doesn't mean that I'm operating from here. It's a miracle service. There's, there's something leaving a lady. I'm seeing, I hope she doesn't mess up this place, but I'm seeing someone coughing out something. This is a demonic, this is a very devilish, very demonic thing. Brothers and sisters, you have come to a place where your life must change. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever that lady is, I'm still teaching. We've not started praying, but in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I stretch my hands and I declare, let there be a miracle for that person right now. God changes your life by bringing the anointing in your direction. This anointing you see is very powerful. Once the anointing locates you, I'm telling you, I don't mean when you fall down under the anointing. That's not how the anointing locates people. God, while we're in this meeting now, you see your heart is like a prayer request. And God is, the spirit of God is just moving and reading everything written therein, including the ones you don't even know you wrote. 
and all of a sudden somewhere in the message you see as a man of god you must be sensitive you will destroy many people's miracles miracles have um time allocations to them not everybody will be touched at the same time that's why you see many things happening i can be teaching then i can stop then i can do things that don't make sense physically are we together now that's why you are here you are here so that god will touch you it's not a god is not a herbalist but when he does decide to touch you look let me tell you as i as i grow in the things of god my fear for god has multiplied exceedingly this god bar is not just mighty you know what the bible says glorious in holiness and fearful fearful there are things that God can do in your life that even you that he used to bless others, you stand in awe and say, God. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. Just a little exhortation. Please sit down. Please sit down. Who is Abigail? Abigail, 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 Abigail. I'm hearing a name, Abigail. Just allow me to do what I'm doing. We'll finish on time. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing. When you are not anointed, you are not a blessing. You are not a blessing at all. At all. It has nothing to do with pride. Thank you, Lord. That's the person I'm talking about. So I'll pray for all of you now. But, I mean, I was just waiting for the Lord to... You have come, so you have to receive something. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to all of you. These are the hands of Jesus and I decree and declare the mountain that stands before you as you stand here in front of me. Lady, look at me. Tap that lady. Look at me. I'm seeing something leaving you. This is like a crown on your head. This is a demonic thing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let her go now. I command that spirit to leave you now. There's no standing in this place. I declare. This lady has been tied down almost 10 years of her life just because of this thing I'm delivering her from. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free. It's amazing what happens that an encounter of five minutes can save you something that has held your life for 10 years. It's not very difficult when the anointing is there. It's very hard when the anointing is not there. Promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is true. In the name of Jesus, I pray for all of you. Your name is Abigail, Mr. Man. Why are you here? Your sister. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I ask the Lord to bless you. You will never, never, never be the same. For one of you here, God is taking something out of your stomach. I don't know what that is, but I'm seeing something. You've been having severe pains, and the Lord is taking it right now out of your stomach. I command that devil to leave you in the name of Jesus, and I decree and declare that you are free by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Please go back to your seat very quickly. That Let me just speak over that lady. In the name of Jesus, don't worry, you, she doesn't have to look at me. It's not how I'm talking to I command by the power of the Holy Spirit, that devil, I see you in the spirit, you let her go now. And you let her family go now. In the name of Jesus. And everything you have stolen, in the name of Jesus, let there be a sevenfold return. I command recovery. I give an instruction. I send that word in the realm of the spirit. They must testify. In the name of Jesus, let there be recovery right now. 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 
and for someone I'm praying to God is bringing recovery to your life I'm stretching my hands right now let's just let this anointing just since the Lord has brought the grace for recovery I declare people have lost things but by the anointing you are recovering things right now you are recovering things right now it will surprise you some of you don't even know what you have lost until it comes back I decree and declare recover time recover opportunities I say it again recover time recover opportunities recover time recover opportunities please be seated the Bible says the B part of 2nd Chronicles 2020 in fact let's look at John chapter 11 first John 11 verse 40 I just want to challenge us in the area of believing God wants to do a quick work tonight but I don't want us to just come and waste our time John 11 and verse 40 and waste our time tonight and then not receive something you know I made a vow before God and every time I continue to vow it that I, I keep saying Lord anoint me to a point that nobody needs to encounter me two times to be changed just once it's okay that once once that if you ever travel from anywhere and come here tonight that even before the meeting you just begin to rejoice because you know that if it is God that brought you here except even if it's a herbalist shrine you won't come and go back the same Are we together? I'm a student in the school of the anointing. I have been studying this all my life, but it's amazing, amazing, the dimensions and the possibilities that are surrounded in this mystery called the anointing. I repeat, you are not a blessing if you are not anointed. If you're a man of God here, please find a way of crying to God that he should put something definite upon your head otherwise lock your church or lock any uh, out outlet or what because you are totally wasting God's people's time if you are not anointed it takes more than good intention to bless people there is something from the realm of the spirit that must come upon people that you are in this meeting now and you know not that after the grace you are just believing that oh let's see what happens no you can know that this one i know that the anointing to solve my problem is this you can know you can know it's true a man doesn't have to tell you he's rich before you say he's rich as he's talking you look at him that's how it is with the anointing you can know you are in the place where the anointing to solve your problem is there and Jesus said unto her say yet I not unto thee listen that if thou wouldest believe he says thou shouldest see the glory of God have I not said to you that if you believe you will see that if you believe you will see there is a relationship between your faith and your experience. Listen very carefully. It's just an exhortation tonight. That if you believe, you will see. That means whether you see the glory of God or not, it is still there. Hmm. Whether you receive the breakthrough or not, the breakthrough is there. Whether it will be featured in your life is a different thing altogether. Are we together now? whether you have a car or not there there are still cars in in a showroom now as we talk is that true whether you you have a house or not there are still houses empty and available so it's one thing for that reality to be available but it's another thing for that reality to become your experience are we together everything we so desire brothers and sisters is available in Christ it's a reality in the realm of the spirit but there are systems in the kingdom that can capture that reality 
and make it your experience here and now that reality does not bless you for as long as it remains in the realm of the spirit your prayer and your desire is that the word becomes flesh so that it dwells among us then we can behold the glory for as long as it is still in the realm of the spirit it doesn't profit you what good is it if you keep having dreams and see yourself rising and then it never manifests open doors in the dreams close doors in your experience lifting in the spirit or whatever visions you're having but in the physical nothing seems to happen the bible says if thou wouldest believe you would think this is a very little expression if you will believe truly it says you will see my god that means i can stand here desiring a lot of things in my life and god is saying all those things that look far you can the word see here does not just mean view it uh -uh. it means capture it let it be your experience if you will believe believe and second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 guides us on the dimensions of believing second chronicles 2020 20. here's what he says jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem two believings here the first belief notice is a big b believe in the lord your god that's the first dimension of your believing believe in the lord your god to believe in the lord does not just mean to agree that he's alive mm -mm. To believe in the Lord your God, number one, means to be convinced and convicted about who God really is and what he's able to do. You don't just sit down and casually believe. Believe is a product of, of a contemplation that happens in your spirit. By the way, let me advise you, for a very long time, we preachers have been telling people that believing just happens in your spirit believing must happen in your spirit your mind and your body the entire tripartite nature of man is involved in believing i guarantee you believe alone with your spirit you will never get anything your mind needs to get to that state too your body needs to participate it's a well-meaning teaching but it's not a complete teaching you believe god spirit soul and body because your entire tripartite nature has a role to play in the manifestation of the promises of God for you believe in the Lord your God notice it didn't say believe in Jesus in fact it didn't say believe in God believe in the Lord when the Bible uses the word Lord is a very interesting expression because the, the word Lord there means is, is from the word Adon it means master it means owner it means manipulator are we together yes believe in the Lord your God get to a point by the spirit where you are convinced that he's not scamming you get to a point where you are convinced it's a point of unbendable persuasion that you believe that if God says he's going to change my family, truly he will. It's amazing how many action movies we act in church. You will think we really believe God, but we don't. Some of you as you are seated right now, if I ask you, do you believe God can change your life? You will say yes. Just because your head was nodding up and down doesn't mean you believe. Are we together now? It's a revelation. Man of God, do you believe in the anointing? Yes, I believe. But it's not true because it's not showing. The Bible says if you believe, you will see. That means if you are not seeing, there is something wrong with that believing. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to find a way of believing this. Conviction. Conviction that the Spirit brings that you have gotten to a point of unbendable persuasion that everything God has said concerning my life now regardless of whether that experience listen you don't believe it when it manifests it should be obvious when it manifests you believe it to make it happen not because it has happened 
it is your faith that will transport that reality from the realm of the spirit i sit down and just tell you oh someone is going to shout for instance under the anointing that's a stupid thing what if it doesn't happen so what is the what what gives that audacity is suicidal for a man of god your, your reputation and your ministry is at stake you don't get up and just start speaking and saying things and talking nonsense i hope you know if it doesn't happen people will say you see this is how proud people end but there is a level of conviction conviction are we together now if i tell you sam to walk and come to me it is because you trust your legs are we together if i ask someone on a wheelchair to stand up and walk to me that person does not trust his legs yet because of the obvious situation so he won't stand up and he would try but if i ask you to come now you are not you don't have any experience with your legs that should disturb you you must get to that point of persuasion you see god is not a politician God was not voted into power. It's not like there is somebody that supervises him in heaven. He does not have a disciplinarian. Nobody rebukes him. Listen carefully. We're talking about the God of the universe. We're not talking about the God of Christians. We're talking about the God of all flesh. God is not a Christian. He is the father of lights. The owner, it belongs to him. God will not come on earth and go to the camp of Christians. The whole earth is his own. Whether you believe in him or not, you face the consequence of fighting the creator. But he is the God of all flesh. Has thou not heard? Has thou not seen? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't get tired. doesn't get weary. So when that God looks at you, with the same power of creation and says i want to change your life then we now sit down and say oh god that's exactly what my director told me and god said you have brought me in the same category with your director who is only 45 years old you know how old i am go and find out if age gives ability god still qualifies to be god even if it's just by age let's assume that the older you are the more powerful you are god is still god by that reference believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god get to a point of persuasion and say lord based on my calculation it will take five years for my family to get this miracle but there's something i know about you that when you decide to rend the heavens and step over a man's situation one month becomes too much you see listen as you are hearing what i'm saying you are saying amen but something within me is saying you are not a apostle don't make a fool out of yourself are we together now if a jimmy is a landlord of an estate and you are trusting god to save 30 million to buy a house and he looks at you and assuming you didn't know he was a landlord he just says kai i want to bless you and someone just whispers to you and say that's the landlord the awareness that is a landlord does something say ah sir good afternoon I, i'm not even because you are aware something just opened you up to the potentials in him that he can compress a 10 years journey in a moment this is the god i serve the bible says the word of god is quick shout quick not slow it may look slow until god decides to shake himself and say now let me lift kenny now let me lift this and you are surprised even you the benefactor there are sides to the equation of greatness no man can explain it's a mystery you just know i prayed i did this from a to b to c i don't know what happened there i just know that a finger manipulated this are we together believe in the lord many believers don't believe god many believers it has to be in this order believe in the lord your god 
Believe what about him? Believe that he is God. You can believe he's a deity. That's not the information required for your greatness. You can believe that he's not a man. Satan too is not a man. Many other spirits too are not men. So there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. And then you will be brought to a point where you will agree, Lord, you can change my life, I believe. Lord, you can wipe my tears. There are many faithless people just because they are holding their Bibles and speaking what is written there. They think they believe. No! It's a conviction. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. That's why he left us the word of God, to help us believe him. The word of God is a commitment from God to you. It's, it's, it's a manifesto. It's to give you room to vet him. That means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him, he still leaves the word. Are we together? Believe in the Lord your God. By doing so, you shall be established. So he says, be convinced and convicted about who God is and what he's able to do. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says, but I know whom I have believed. He says, I am persuaded that he is able. I am persuaded that he is able. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Listen, it says, For he that cometh to God, like you have come now, it says you must come believing that he exists, and then that he is a rewarder. Let me see how many of you came from far. If you came from far, let me see your hands. How many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming? Now, do you think, please drop your hands, thank you. Do you think that God will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from Ghana, someone came from Maiduguri. So within and outside this nation, people coming, there are many people connecting from around the world. Do you believe if you were God, will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident? And for 12 hours, come and sit down. Some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon. Or 2 or 3. And then as God, you sit down. And then say, okay, share the grace. May God bless you. I don't know the God you gave your life to. But the one I gave my life to is a serious God. It's a very serious God. We are used to people playing games with our lives. God is not just a trustworthy God. He is too serious. That he gave his son to die. And then he will play games with your life? No, sir. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. Let me tell you something. You've heard me say it. If you ever find yourself coming here to Koinonia, that you arrive here safely, alone, is a sign that half of your challenges have gone. Um, now, uh, you would think I'm saying it just because I'm the man of God here. You decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise. Money that you are saving will disappear. All of a sudden, every to some of you, the morning to come, you are not even yet sure whether you will come. It's a spirit. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Sister, believe in the Lord your God. My brother, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning your admission, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning the baby, I know it's five years, but believe in the Lord your God. Believe. Concerning God, turning your life around. You need more than a job. You need breakthrough. You need favor. If you get a job of 50,000, you are still backward. Because you should have been working for the past 10 years. So now, the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100,000. That God, can you shift my, what would have been 
the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my September and wait for me there that I can enter September and I, I, it will look as if September is 10 years put together one of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people he made the sun to stand still he made the sun to go backward are we together he did something to time when you lose time you have lost everything believe in the Lord your God number two please let's go back to um, second Chronicles he said believe in his prophets listen carefully his prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies his prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake that means someone who is real that's not what he's talking about he said believe his prophets so shall ye prosper to prosper means to do well he says believe his prophets his prophets are not just people who prophesy his prophets are not just real men of god <clears throat> listen carefully this is where we miss it you must learn this his prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of god it has nothing to do with maybe someone being real his prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um, come Sam come darling look at this I'm Elijah and I'm going to the house of a widow of Zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going I'm going to meet other people who have problems so I meet a gentleman who has problem and I just greet him how are you where is the house of the widow of Zarephath he's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him I'm a prophet I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. The same way Jesus saw ten lepers. The same way Jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go. There is a man sent to you. There is an anointing sent to you. Listen. I know that many people will not like me for what I'm telling you. Not every anointing can bless you. Generally speaking, by opening your heart, I mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny. It's true. Hear what I'm telling you, and then God will bless you. There is an anointing, a portion. There is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others i could even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sent to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarephath elijah was looking for just one how prophet what of other women <clears throat> I love them I can pray I can intercede may God bless you do a B and C but I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath where is she finally you find her and his clear she's not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say I spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing I'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent 
over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist it's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes like a messenger angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person Daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say I'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said Daniel I am come to give you understanding are you the only one I am come to give you understanding Jesus is appearing by the road Saul is on his way to Damascus brothers and sisters the Bible says there were other people with Saul God would have been fair enough to at least give them something and then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say Kai now what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated I know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the result you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naman go to jordan wash seven times J naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and a small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your lepros
two scriptures and then we'll pray exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians he says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Look up, please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. That means I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their, both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately. Readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This is somebody you shook hands with. Turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people 
um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone, not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depths, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was... Uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself. And you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He says it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself 
it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says believe his prophets there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and I watch and many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you are sitting and someone says I'm thinking of you who do you think you are no. I want to help you I want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and Jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. 
is equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment. Say, Satan, go away. I'm before the presence of God. Tomorrow is too far. God can. How many minutes does it take to do a transfer? I believe him. Yes, I do. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. I believe he can change my life. In one minute, I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I 
Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family Make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service. Don't just stand alone to receive. I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me give us one last prayer point. 
Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabrahasikete malakata. Shakatakata barakata barakata barakos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. Oh! comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone, it's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, 
I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Shalakato sadakata. Sheketo kata shalakato ziata. now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire
I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken spirit of victory cover us with your wings Madam, please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is this the is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ please where is that man we have to hurry up there's, there's a lot to do in the name of Jesus Christ mama I decree and declare over your life that fire the Lord it looks like you are an elderly woman but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? CV and your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay, 
sometimes this time 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 just affects you but i'm praying right now and i'm seeing letters and i'm seeing on the letter congratulations listen and i'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough listen let me tell you except god is not god if this anointing that i'm seeing touches you then you and your family must stand here and testify i'm stretching my hands right now lord you are showing me this in the name of jesus this is a symbol of breakthrough i stretch my hands every family and every person that must receive of this grace i'm stretching my hands now you must testify i release upon you that grace you must testify i declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion i command it i declare it i decree it. in the name of jesus i command it i decree it i declare it right now in the mighty name of jesus christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands right now and i declare it's time for your family to rise i'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and i decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family i command that is gone now in the name of jesus it is gone i cost the power of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands i look and in the spirit i don't see the blessing of the lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this but in the name of Jesus I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you I'm declaring still that ministry of fire many of you will be surprised whatever it is you are involved in God is about to bring grace upon it I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of God come through your hands into your life Lord I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your Is your dad? Where did he come from? From high there. From high there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father in the name of jesus christ i declare in the name of jesus Anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare a restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands, I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life, huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married already. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. 
You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Good things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil. You are a terrible lady, but it's not true. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Huh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do I'm working in a security oh, you are in security yes, sir. did you go to school yes sir I'm running my masters you are running your masters yes, sir. my dear do you believe God can change your life yes, now sir. I believe sir hold my hands to appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen. I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter and your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny. I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job that on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man if you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat, 
on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, Do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincingly, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand those who are in here you are trusting god to touch you to touch your family members you can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now please quickly quickly let's do that very quickly while we are doing that please if you have written your prayer request i want you to wave it and ushers you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly let's let's have ushers if the ushers are not in your pr department you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request 
um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1 Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2 please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
sickness is leaving, breakthrough is coming, heaven touches earth in this place. Oppression is lifted, shackles are breaking, heaven touches earth in this place.
and that's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Shalabakaruta sabre digete katabaladaba. Nataka parakato shadabre digete beledebos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Ashala gata brada gata barakato sada brada gadech. In the cross asia sahasa barakato shabrada gada baladaba. Rakata branda gada baladabosh. Ebratos gada brandi gadi baladabosh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. Lekato shata prate kato sabre de gadeba. Rakata parata parato sade prate gade baladaba. Arato sekele monta shin daba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you. These prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. 
Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abounds. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. 
I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And now in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah. I decree and declare, may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family represented here. In the name of Jesus, and I say this from the depth of my heart, enough is enough. I prophesy it again, enough is enough. Whatever represents setbacks in any family, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night. Every graduate here that is trusting God for a job, you heard the testimony here, in the name of Jesus Christ, both where you applied and where you didn't apply, may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you. Those who are in business here, in the name of Jesus, business is spiritual, the grace that will cause your business to command strange results, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God, that means if God does not step in for you, you know you are in trouble. I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life, come out of that trouble now. Whether it's a financial trouble, whether it's whatever, come out of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every attack on your destiny, I decree and declare from tonight, by the assignment of angels, we ward off that attack in Jesus' name. Whoever has been destined by God to help you rise, and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit, he has not been able to locate you. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you. <laughs> Believe in every prayer that we're praying. We're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity, minus you. <laughs> I say it again, minus you. Everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family, I declare the mystery of exemption over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when men say there is a casting down, I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last. I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Any door that was once open and is now closed, I reopen it in Jesus' name. I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ.
I say it again, let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. Anyone assigned here, program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no but enter it i say it again if that fake cool is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.